I've been following this sub for a while. Tonight, it happened. My boyfriend and I had a glitch. Well, more like time just stopped. Hang in with me for this story. Myself, my boyfriend and his son were getting into the car after dinner. He made a point to point at the clock at 6.45 p.m. and say his daughter should be finished with her cheerleading and should be heading home around 8. So it was 6.45 p.m. It takes around 15 minutes to get back to our house from dinner. We got home. We messed around for, let's say, another 20 minutes and then started a movie. Here's where the glitch happens. My boyfriend turned to me almost all the way through the movie and asked what time it is. I tap my phone and check and it was 7.30 p.m. 7.30? He just sat straight up and paused the movie. I didn't even get it at first. He started saying, Oh my god, we lost an hour. I then understood what he was saying and asked to see how far into the movie we were. The time in the movie said we had watched an hour and twenty minutes. There is no way we could have driven home from dinner, hung out, watched an hour and twenty minutes of a movie, and it be 7.30 p.m. We are still shook. It's like time stopped. Has anyone ever had this happen? It's messed us up bad. I was telling a friend about this experience, and they directed me here to share it. In November 2019, before anyone knew about COVID-19 in the UK, both me and my fiancé had it. We didn't know what it was until months later though. COVID hit my fiancé worse than me, and all she wanted to eat was pastry. I was actually able to get out of bed, so while I still felt like death, I felt like a walk to the store was still doable for me, especially as I could get the bus home. The walk from the house to the store would take 35 minutes on a good day. I'm chronically ill with fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. I promise these small details are important. The walk to the store took me a little longer as I had to keep stopping to hack up a lung and catch my breath. I acquired the pastries and some sore throat medicine before making my way to the bus stop beside the store and finding that the buses weren't running properly because so many drivers were off sick due to whatever this virus was that was going around. We didn't know anything about it until February 2020. So I text my fiance right as I start walking from the bus station that I'm on my way but walking so I'll be back when I'm back. She replied almost immediately with an okay and to take my time. I put in my headphones and started my music, which I remember distinctly was a 10 minute song and began walking. I remember reaching the edge of the store building and turning a corner. And then I remember walking up the garden path and opening the front door to the house. My fiancé had to come downstairs to get a drink and was extremely confused when she saw me. She told me to check the time on the message I had sent. The message I had sent her to say I was on my way home had been sent six minutes previous. There is physically no way I could have made it home, an easy three kilometer walk in six minutes. Even if I ran there, there is no way that could have happened. I was also still only halfway through the song that was playing when I set off. I wasn't particularly out of breath. I didn't have a coughing fit upon arrival home. And that walk back always brought me out in a sweat. But I wasn't sweating. The only explanation I can come up with is that I teleported somehow. Anyone have any thoughts? I'll never forget that night. 
it's etched in my memory as one of the most surreal experiences of my life. It was about 10 years ago. A friend and I were driving through the vast, empty stretches of Saskatchewan, making our way from Winnipeg to Vancouver. It was around 11.30, maybe midnight, and the darkness was absolute. The stars barely cut through the sky, and our headlights seemed to disappear into the blackness ahead. It was as ordinary as a midnight drive could be, with nothing but the hum of the road in kilometers of fields on either side. But then, in a split second, everything changed. Out of nowhere, the night was replaced by the brightness of broad daylight. Not a distant glow or flash, but full, high noon daylight. The sky turned blue, and we could see fields stretching for kilometers in every direction, clear as if it were the middle of the day. It was as if the universe had flipped a switch, casting sunlight over the land for a few seconds, then snatching it back. My friend and I were stunned, almost frozen, glancing at each other to confirm we were both witnessing this impossible phenomenon. The whole thing lasted maybe five seconds before the darkness closed in around us again. Over the next few days, we searched every corner of the internet, desperate for an explanation. Maybe a massive explosion or some unknown atmospheric event. But there was nothing. No reports, no clues, no theories. To this day, my friend and I still talk about it, wondering what in the world we saw that night. It remains one of the most mysterious, unexplainable events of my life. Like a forgotten memory of a dream that no one else could ever believe. I'm not sure if this is the right place to post this, so if not, please direct me to a different page. I've been debating whether to share this, but it's been on my mind for a long time, so here it goes. Apologies in advance for the lengthy post, but I think it needs context. This incident happened about three years ago. I work in healthcare as a patient care technician basically a CNA, but in a hospital instead of a nursing home. During this particular night shift, my responsibility was to sit with a confused patient to keep him safe. He had dementia, so he would try to get up and wander around or pull out his IVs. My job was to make sure he didn't get up on his own to prevent falls and to keep him from pulling out any lines. This kind of sitter role is pretty common for confused patients in hospitals. The patient was in his 80s, and he was so confused, he didn't even know his own name or where he was. Things were going smoothly. He fell asleep around 11 p.m., but then woke up around 1 a.m. and looked over at me. To get my attention, he said, Hey, Victoria. That's not my name, but since he was confused, I didn't think much of it at first. I told him my actual name and asked if he needed anything, but he kept calling me Victoria three more times. Here's where it got strange. My parents almost named me Victoria. It came down to that or my real name. They ultimately chose my name because my dad wasn't a fan of Tori spelling. The names aren't even similar. I asked the nurse if this patient had any family members named Victoria or had previously had a nurse by that name, but there was no connection. No family member, spouse, or prior caregiver with that name. Trying to shake off the odd feeling, I told myself it was probably just his confusion. But a short while later, he started singing the theme song to the Beverly Hillbillies. And that's when I really got chills. When I was little, my parents used to recite that theme song as if it were a bedtime story when my sibling and I asked for a story. The whole situation gave me an eerie feeling, like this man somehow knew things about me, even though we had never met. 
There is no way he could have known any of my family. This was in my college town, far from where I grew up. I might be overthinking it, but years later, I still think about this night and the unsettling feeling I had. Has anyone experienced anything similar or have any thoughts on this? I'd love to hear any insights. Today, I experience something that I can't explain. Every morning when I go to work, I stop at a convenience store on the way and pick up a can of energy juice for the drive. I have a fairly long commute to work, so I normally finish the drink whilst en route. Yesterday, I went to the store and picked up some new brand I hadn't tried before. It has a distinctive bright pink can. Whilst I was driving, I opened the can, took a sip, and decided I wasn't a fan, so I put it back into the cup holder and continued on my drive. This morning, I went about my routine as normal, stopped off at the store, went in and bought a can of old-fashioned Red Bull for the drive. I walked back to my car and seen yesterday's can still in place on the cup holder. I picked it up, feeling that it was still nearly full walked over to the bin which is outside the store and put it in. I then walked back to my car, opened the door and freeze in place. There, in my cup holder, is the bright pink can. After standing in thought for a minute, I pick it up, still full, and walk back over to the bin, trying to process what had just happened. When I get to the bin, I peer inside and see that the bright pink can I had just placed inside was still there. I didn't care at this point, so I put my hand into the bin and picked the can up. Some of the juice had come out from the can being slightly on its side, but it was still basically full. The bin was half full, but I couldn't see any other cans or anything resembling my drink inside the bin. So there I am standing with a can of gross bright pink energy juice in each hand, wondering, is this a glitch in the matrix? I called my wife, who just laughed at me, and said I was goofing around. And really, it is a pretty dull story compared to some I have read here. But I just can't think of a logical explanation. Hey Papa, I think you'll enjoy this one. So this past Sunday, November 24th, 2024, for posterity, I had a very vivid and slightly bizarre dream about my best friend, whom we'll call Boo so I'm not blowing up her spot. I've known Boo for over 15 years and am also familiar with her significant other, that we'll call M. Now M is a controlling and abusive waste of space that has Boo trapped in the situationship using her children's leverage. He doesn't like me, nor I him. Well, on Sunday night I dreamt I was in a basement with Boo, M, and someone else I didn't know. None of them really seemed to be aware of me. No one spoke to me, nor did I engage with any of them. But what I observed was the three of them, all playing pool, and at first, having a good time. But as the dream went on, the vibe started getting way off, and it devolved into Boo and M having a pretty intense argument. Alright, not really all that far-fetched so far. Then yesterday, November 27th, 2024, Boo called me as she usually does once a week while she's driving home from work. I immediately told her about my dream because it's really strange for my dreams to stay with me that strongly, especially for two days. So I tell her about the dream, and then asked her if anything weird had happened between her and M. And her exact words were, Holy shit, I'm kind of freaking out. You had this dream Sunday night? And I confirmed. And her follow-up was, 
in a basement, playing pool. Again, I confirmed. And from there, she really freaked out and told me in very explicit detail everything that had gone on that night, and my dream was spot on. The third person in the dream that I didn't know is M's brother, S, and they were playing pool at S's house in his basement where his bar is set up. So maybe it was less of a dream and more of an astral projection? I'm not sure what to think about it. It kind of sketches me out, but also I'm kind of proud. It's at least equal parts creepy and cool. Thanks for reading this. About four months ago, my mum had knee replacement surgery and they sent her home the next day. After three days, her leg was kind of red and significantly more swollen. She also had a fever, so we decided to go back to the hospital. This was around 10 p.m. and it was dark. I was driving. Mum was in the passenger seat. My 12-year-old daughter was in the back middle seat. We live in a very rural area. And after about 10 miles, we hadn't met one single other vehicle. It's that rural. Along this stretch of highway, there are a few really tight curves that have a 30 mile per hour reduced speed limit sign. No flashing lights or anything else, just a yellow metal sign. There's a creek on one side and a steep cliff on the other. So no shoulder, no driveways, nowhere for another car to be besides on the road, as we were. After the first curve, all of a sudden we see a bright blue light flash through the car. I saw it on the trees in front of me and behind me when I looked in the door mirror. Then it was gone, like cop lights, but without any red or headlights behind us. Just for one second, no sound, no other cars in front or behind us. And we're only going 30 miles per hour. All three of us saw it, the exact same thing. It really freaked me out because I'm a very logical, rational person. And I can say this is the only experience I've had my whole life that I can't explain. Also, there are two wooden crosses beside the road where a tractor trailer crashed and two people died in that spot. I remember that accident because it tore up the highway with a semi jackknifed and that section had to be repaved. I don't believe in ghosts or aliens or anything like that. And if my mum and daughter hadn't seen this too, I would have convinced myself I was just seeing things and probably never even mentioned it to anyone. So my theory is we drove through a glitch in the matrix and saw the emergency lights from that accident years ago. As crazy as that seems, it makes as much sense as anything else I can think of. What do you guys think? Has this happened to anyone else? Hello everyone, I've been reading stories on this subreddit for some time and never thought that I would ever experience something even remotely similar. But lo and behold, something pretty odd happened to me in an elevator of all places and I'd like to ask your opinion on it. Anyway, as a disclaimer, I'm the type of person who'd rather ignore anything that seems out of the ordinary and go on about their life. But I try to be as rational as possible. However, I keep thinking about this situation. Maybe I interpreted the whole situation wrong. I don't know. I'll let you guys form your own opinions. Yesterday, I had to pick up a paper for an exam from the university where it's also hosted. I'm not a student there, so I'm not very familiar with the place. And the last time I went there was last year for a similar exam. Anyway, this is just to give you a little more context. The story goes like this. The university is extremely crowded since it's noon. I take the elevator to the third floor, go pick up the paper 
from one of their offices, then go back to the elevators. I get into the elevator with these two girls. I stand right next to the buttons. This is my fault too, cause I hesitated to press my floor. But I wasn't sure if the one button was the one for the ground floor or for the first floor. Anyway, the two girls talk for a bit before pressing the one button. First floor, not ground floor, as I figured later. Which was the P button. The two girls talk for a bit before pressing the one button. First floor, and going silent. One was not the ground floor, as I figured later. Which was the P button. Everything is normal so far. As we get to the first floor, I step out a bit to check if it's the floor I came from. Obviously it's not. I get back in. The girls, weirdly, don't get off at the floor. And don't say anything about it either. Okay. Maybe they changed their minds but didn't mention it to each other. Whatever. Two or three people, I can't remember the exact number, but it's more than one person. Get in with us from the first floor. We'll call them the second group for clarity, cause it's about to get even more complicated. The second group pressed the buttons for the third floor and the fifth floor. Still normal. Now, it gets even weirder. And I honestly don't really understand why I had no reaction, or made no move to say anything. By the way, everyone was quiet. Nobody communicated anything to each other, which I really don't get since everyone who got in the elevator was accompanied by at least one other person. Anyway, we go back to the damn third floor. On that floor, the two girls get off. The floor that they were previously on with me. Again, maybe they both realized that they needed to get back to the third floor, but somehow didn't mention it to each other, and neither made an attempt to press the third floor button. Anyway, the second group, the one who pressed the button for the third floor, doesn't get off at the third floor. Instead, another group of three people with coffee cups steps in. And I'm not messing with you. One of the people with the coffee cups calmly presses the button for the third floor. Finally, another person in the elevator pressed the button for the ground floor. And honestly, I was worried that the elevator would just stay stuck on the third floor. But then, I felt it going down. And I was extremely relieved as we reached the ground floor and I stepped out. Funnily enough, I looked back to see if anyone else got off at the ground floor. Nope. No one. Even if there was one person who pressed the button. I leave the university and focus on finding the bus station, forgetting about the whole thing. I get back home and start thinking about it more in depth. What the hell? Also, why the hell? It's not like anything supernatural or scary happened. Besides the weirdly subdued frustration I was feeling because I was unable to leave the damn building already. It just made no sense. It wasn't as if there was one odd person who was acting weird. It wasn't even as if anyone signaled that they'd pressed the wrong button. Everyone involved in the situation, which need I remind you, were like seven to eight people, behaved illogically. And I don't understand why. It was as if they were mimicking having a destination, when everyone was actually circling back to the third floor. It didn't help that it was silent. No one was communicating anything to anyone. Like, oh, I forgot my bag on the third floor, or anything of the sort. And I also felt this strange sense of calm, mixed with some uneasiness, and a sensation I can't describe, as if I didn't belong in this situation or space. I honestly think I was, one, being pranked or just people playing some kind of game. Two, I'm crazy and understood the whole situation in a profoundly wrong way. Three, the students in this university are extremely indecisive and also don't know how an elevator works. Anyway, thanks for listening. And I'd like to hear your thoughts. If you have any questions or 
there is a part which didn't make sense, let me know. I know I'm probably making a bigger deal out of it than I should. It was just an interesting situation. My life is very mundane in general. Hello watchers and listeners, thank you so much for watching. If you have a story to share, please send it to my email in the description below. This channel is mostly made up of stories sent in by viewers or people they know. Another way to support the channel is to sign up for my Patreon where you can watch my videos ad free. More perks will be added in the new year. Also I will be adding new designs to the merch store, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you all for your continuous support, and remember,